Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Bell V-280 Valor prototype begins ground tests. Retired Air Force pilots welcome back on active duty. And NBAA says safety is a priority in Las Vegas. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's October 6, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Bell V-280 Valor prototype aircraft has successfully begun its restrained ground run test operations. The aircraft will continue ground run testing at the Bell Helicopter Amarillo Assembly Center. It will undergo a series of functional tests running all aircraft systems and flight controls in preparation for first flight this fall. The V-280 has been designed to provide our military with the speed, range, and operational productivity needed to complete any mission successfully and outmatch every opponent. New innovations incorporated to V-280 include stationary nacelles, which increases the ease of aircraft maintenance and safety of the ingress and egress. The newest tilt rotor offers fixed wing high speed performance and low speed agility, giving soldiers and operators the option to select the best pace and maneuverability for their mission. Retired Air Force pilots holding Air Force Specialty Code 11X are being encouraged to apply for a voluntary retired return to active duty program in order to fill rated staff positions to help alleviate the existing manning shortages within the Air Force rated pilot community. The Secretary of Air Force approved VR RAD for implementation on July 11, 2017 as one of a wide range of initiatives the Air Force is pursuing to improve pilots' quality of life and quality of service in order to increase retention. Air Force efforts to address the pilot shortage include reviewing requirements to ensure pilots are utilized effectively. As a number of non-flying staff positions require a pilot's expertise, the Air Force reviewed these positions to determine which ones require pilot expertise and which staff positions do not. Pilots who retired within the last five years in the rank of captain, major, or lieutenant colonel and under the age of 60 may apply for the program. Participation is limited to 25 retired pilots and active duty tour lengths are limited to 12 months. AFPC will accept applications until December 31st, 2018 or until all openings are filled. After the break, NBAA says safety is a priority in Las Vegas. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. The dream is real, a truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at errol-news.net. The tragedy that happened in Las Vegas on Sunday has everyone on edge. But the city is a popular destination for hundreds of conventions and trade shows every year, including the NBAA base, which is coming up next week. NBAA released a statement this week to reassure those planning to attend the annual convention and trade show that safety is a top priority for the city as well as the organization. NBAA's thoughts and prayers are with the citizens of Las Vegas. In light of the horrific events that have taken place in the city, the association said in the statement, for any NBAA event, our top priority is the safety and security of all participants, and we are in coordination with federal and local officials to ensure that NBAA-based participants are in a safe, secure environment. 
The association noted that NBAA base will proceed as planned, that no major exhibitors or speakers have canceled their attendance, and that security has been increased for the event. The convention and trade show kicks off next Tuesday and runs through Thursday, October 12th. It's Friday, and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. Aviation has seen its share of tough times, but the fight to privatize ATC could be the straw that broke the camel's back. It must be opposed. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Chris, and hi, folks. For those of you who've been following me for the last couple of decades, uh, was it 21, 22 years of Aero News and then US Aviator before that and my Air Progress days and so much more and any of the 20 books we've done over the years. I think you have to give me one thing, that my passion for this industry is equaled by very few. Um, I have loved it since I was a kid at the RC model field the same kid a few years later pedaling a bicycle down Ramapo Valley Road on the long trip to Lincoln Park Airport to learn to fly. And through it all, I've tried very, very hard to give back, to tell you the truth, and to let you know what I think aviation needs or doesn't need, as the case may be. We fought horrible foes, and as you know, we have paid the price. So take me very seriously when I say right now that the biggest foe I may personally face and that we may collectively face are one and the same. And that is this entity centered around a Republican congressman, Schuster, and his ilk, who are trying to wrest control of a critical part of our aviation infrastructure and put it in the hands of those who will ultimately do aviation no good. We're talking, of course, about H.R. 2997. Bill Schuster has done his best to get this thing passed. It's been an ugly process. He has been coercive. He has been untruthful. He has been pretty ugly about it. And I really can't tell you much about what his true motives are, except for the fact that ultimately um, he has stamped his name to it and he's going to get it done one way or another. The problem is, if he does, we get hurt. So take me very seriously when I say this. You need to get on the phone to your, to your congressman. After that, you need to get on the phone to your senators. You need to let people know that H.R. 2997 is not a cure-all. It is not modernization. It is a way to destroy what is, at this point, the best ATC system in the world. Not perfect, unless you look at everything else out there. Then it's pretty darn perfect in comparison. We must collectively and aggressively fight this. I can't tell you how strongly I feel about it, how dangerous I believe it to be, and frankly, how much I fear it. If you have any belief in what I have told you for the last couple of decades, right now, start whatever you can do your congressman, your senator, media, elected officials, whatever it takes, and let them know that 2997 must not pass and aviation must be allowed to survive. For the Air News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, hoping for the best. After the break, Transport Canada certifies the PT6C67A engine. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristol Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristol is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. (music) 
Transport Canada has certified the Pratt & Whitney Canada PT-6C-67A helicopter engine, which powers the AW609 tilt rotor. FAA validation of the PT-6C-67A engine is expected by the end of 2017 and supports FAA certification of the AW609 in 2018 as the first commercial tilt rotor to enter operation. Instrum Helicopter has announced the sale of an undisclosed number of piston-powered 280FX helicopters to Pakistan. The sale was managed by Instrum's representative in Pakistan Global Services and Solutions. These will be the first Instrum aircraft to be sold in Pakistan. Delivery should start the end of 2017, with the remainder delivered in early 2018. The FAA has released a SAFO providing some best practices for accomplishing an approach and landing on the correct airport surface. On July 7, 2017, a commercial airliner conducting a visual approach at night over flew other airliners positioned on a taxiway awaiting takeoff clearance. This incident is an extreme example of incorrect surface approaches and landings and highlights the importance of employing best practices for successful approaches and landings to the correct airport and runway. Cammon Aero Systems has signed a contract with Columbia Basin Helicopters for the purchase of a K-Max aircraft to be delivered in 2018. Columbia Basin Helicopters of La Grande, Oregon has been operating for over 20 years. Primary operations include aerial application and firefighting. In addition to helicopters, the company operates a number of fixed-wing single-engine air tankers for state and federal agencies. Palm Beach Helicopters has installed a new TH-22 Advanced Aviation Training Device manufactured by Elite Simulation Solutions. The TH-22 is a single-seat, single-control trainer based on the Robinson R-22 helicopter and includes the optional 3DOF pitch roll and heave motion system. Palm Beach Helicopters has incorporated the TH-22 into training programs for private instrument and commercial ratings. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. One of the paratroopers who was among those that parachuted behind enemy lines on D-Day and survived has gone west at the age of 96 in Salem, Oregon. Donald Malarkey was a member of the Easy Company, which was prominent in the HBO series Band of Brothers. He died of age-related causes on September 30th. Malarkey would see fighting in France, the Netherlands, and Belgium with easy company after dropping in on D-Day. He was one of those who held off the Nazis while surrounded at Bastogne during the Battle of the Bulge late in 1944. Malarkey was awarded the French Legion of Honor Medal, the highest award presented by the French government in 2009. Malarkey said that his memories of the war haunted him through much of his life, but the release of the HBO series was cathartic for him and helped him cope with the emotional issues he had carried since the war. He had remained close with other members of the unit and attended his last Easy Company reunion in August in Portland. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. Do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you Monday.